Hi and welcome back to the North Lodge Cottage Garden and my final planting series of how to plant bare root David Austin roses. In previous videos you've seen me unpackage, rehydrate and then plant a bare root rose into the ground and now you join me as I'm just about to plant a newly arrived bare root rose into a pot. Now the first thing to bear in mind when you uh, plant into a pot uh, and if it's going to be a permanent position for the rose is to make sure that your pot that you're using is going to be large enough. Many of you will be really, really shocked about the size of pot and the root system your newly delivered roses will actually need. You're going to have to plant a potted rose into something around 45 to 60 centimeters in diameter and around 45 to 60 centimeters in depth. This pot here is uh, 59 centimeters, a little under 60 centimeters across, a little under two feet across, and it stands a total of 55 centimeters tall. This, this pot is absolutely perfect for growing a rose permanently in a pot. Now, in previous uh, videos, I've created guides of how to top dress and look after a potted rose on this scale. And you pretty much, once it's planted into a pot like this, treat it as if it was growing in the garden. The first thing you need to bear in mind is you need to make sure that you're using really good, high quality, peat free compost. Now, this is really, really key with this. You do not want to scrimp on the quality of compost you're adding to this pot. And you also don't want to add things to this pot that are far too rich, nutrient rich and strong that will scorch its roots. I have many people uh, message me saying, why well, I, I planted it in horse manure, I planted it in cow manure that I bought. That product is particularly useful for mulching and mixing with soil, but it's not uh, perfect for growing exclusively in the only media that the plant has access to. So you want to be using a peat free, preferably loam based soil, which you're gonna be mixing with 50% good quality, 100% organic compost. As you can see, I've already part filled my pot. And the next stage for me is to now add some of David Austin's fungal stimulus. All I'm going to do is sprinkle a couple of teaspoons of that into the pot and then using a border fork, I'm just going to mix that into the soil itself. That's going to spawn, uh, react with the roots of the plant and cause nice strong root growth. Right, the next stage and it was really important in the stage of planting in the ground, was also to make sure that you keep your rows wet and hydrated and to the very last minute and it actually goes into the pot. So my rose, this one is Harlow Carr, a beautiful, highly fragranced rose from David Austin Roses, which is really useful for planting next to high traffic areas. I'm right here next to the front door. So this rose is going to be enjoyed by all of us as we come and go from the cottage. Your planting depth and suggestion is exactly the same when growing in a pot as it is when growing in the ground. So depending on where you're joining me across the world and how cold the weather conditions are, you're either going to be leaving this union just proud above the ground, if like me, you're growing in a mild climate where it's very unlikely to get frost damage, or if you're joining me from one of the colder places in the world where you're gonna get sub-zero temperatures from weeks at a time, you're looking at burying this union here below the soil by two or three inches to protect it from the weather. So once you've decided which part of the world you're in, again, the same principles apply as before. You're wanting to make sure that when you plant your rose in the pot, you're not squashing all of those roots up together and it's got plenty of room to move about. You're then looking at then backfilling your rose. And all I've done, as I say, I've part filled this uh, pot with compost already, so it will probably just stay there. And I can now start backfilling, as I say, with my compost. This is 50% loam based compost. That's a John Innins number three, which is a soil loam based compost suitable for growing shrubs and trees in pots. And I've mixed it with 50% Eco Mix from Eco Sustainable Solutions, which is the product I use all over the garden as a garden mulch. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to backfill it into the pot. Pause at about the halfway stage to make sure that everything that you're doing is upright. You don't want to squash those roots down. You want to keep that plant nice and upright. We're going to continue backfilling from our wheelbarrow of compost. Fill this pot right up. Again, I've got a watering can of soil to hand, ready to water this plant just as soon as I've finished potting it. The other thing you need to bear in mind 
when you're potting a, a, bare, a bare root rose permanently into a pot, depending on the season you're growing in. Now we're just entering the winter months here, it's October. And although we want this pot to drain, and we want this pot to have good quality soil, which is going to keep water, we don't want it to become waterlogged. So at this time of year, you need to make sure you're getting your pots up off the ground and onto pot feet. A little bit more soil needed. I'm gonna use my hands, it's probably easier. As many of you have seen, I've got really large mole-like hands, great for moving soil. There we go, right, that's all pot topped up now. A bit of a stone there that we don't want. Last of the compost going in. So as I was saying, you wanna pay close attention now to your drainage. During the summer months, when you're growing roses in pots, I've suggested to you that you make sure that you put a water retaining saucer underneath your pot, just to trap a small reservoir of water and make sure the rose doesn't dry out during waterings. During the winter, that's completely the, the opposite. You want to make sure your rose is remaining free draining and it's not sat in water. You now need to remove the saucer if you have a saucer underneath your pot and get it up off the ground onto pot feet or a couple of blocks just to make sure the drainage holes in the bottom run freely. Right, the rose is all potted up. Again, because I'm in a mild climate, I've left my union proud by around two inches at the top of the pot. And now I'm gonna suggest you top dress this with some horticultural grit. Lots and lots of you have asked me in the past whether it's suitable for you to plant things around a rose in a pot. And the answer to that is yes, as long as it's not going to really compete too heavily with the plant itself. If you wanted to plant things like saffinia or petunias to cascade down the outside of the pot, that's fine. I wouldn't suggest you plant really strong growing bedding plants like busy lizzies around the actual plant itself. They're going to compete with it and choke it around the actual stems themselves. You're gonna end up with problems with mold and mildew and fungus and probably end up getting black spot on the row. So personally, I like to leave mine just one rose in a pot. Now, as I said, I'm gonna to top dress this off now with horticultural grit. Many of you like to add a decorative finish to your pots and I understand why, but please don't add large cobbles or pebbles or decorative slate to the top of your pots. Many of those items during the summer months will get really, really warm and you will be absolutely astounded just how warm something like a Scottish cobble gets. It uh, will retain heat well into the evening and especially if those cobbles are large, sort of the size of a satsuma or an orange, they're gonna continue to radiate heat all the way through into the evening and make the root ball of the plant really, really hot and make it dry out an awful lot. So if you are gonna top dress with anything, I suggest horticultural grit, this is horticultural grit here, or a very, very fine gravel, something with a particle size of under five or six millimeters. That way, you're adding a, hort you're adding a, a nice top layer, it's decorative, it's gonna suppress the weeds, it's gonna retain moisture and protect the roots from the worst of the summer sun, but it's not gonna hold heat into the evening hours and continue to make your pot dry out during the summer months, which is really, really important. Right, just the last of the horticultural grit going on now, about an inch to an inch and a half of horticultural grit all over the top of the pot. Just gonna literally work that out and spread that out with my hands. Gonna give this rose now a really good water. As I said, I've got a watering can of water to hand. It's gonna need at least one watering can of water a week until it gets itself established. And then you're gonna to have to pay very close attention to its watering and make sure come March or April, as the rose wakes up and starts to grow, you get that water retaining source back underneath the pot. Now, growing in a pot long term has several drawbacks. It obviously has an awful lot of plus points. If you're gardening on a balcony, terrace or patio, it enables you to grow things like roses where you don't have any open soil but you do need to make sure that you're looking after the plant really well and removing the top three inches of compost for top dressing. Have a look at my latest video from last year of how to do that. Thank you very much for joining me. I will see you all again soon. Take care now, bye-bye.